Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's, um, I'm very pleased to be here with a lot of friends and colleagues. Uh, I have to share with you that I was privileged, actually, to work, uh, as, as Conrad said, in academia for a number of years, for 13 years. So I've been teaching myself and created this passion for teaching and for using, I was teaching theoretic and applied mechanics. So uh, Illinois is a place, uh, they call it in the US, the mecca of computing, because it had the uh, a lot of ingredients there from the supercomputers to the, 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 the existence of Wolfram right in town and we've been working together for years. So I have that passion for this subject. But I also joined uh, back in 1999 uh, UNESCO, which is one of UN specialized agencies. It's one of the typical uh, intergovernmental organizations where I learned the other side of the coin, the, the more realities, how governments work, how decisions are made, how all this fits together. So the passion we express here has to be also contrasted against realities on the other side of decision making that I will share with you some views about. Personally, I'm very, very excited, obviously, about uh, computer-based mass and like to see that happen in one way or another. I think it's, it's, a, it's a matter of time before all these ideas converge or crystallize. But I learned also through the last 13 years that there are many pieces to this puzzle beyond our excitement here in this room. And I'm, I'm going to, to try to, I'm not gonna argue in favor of CBM because I guess we all argue that mostly, but to share some views of how to get there and how to scale up, how to, to get, get this at an international scale. We at UNESCO, UNESCO is a very unique uh, UN agency. It's a specialized agency. It's the only one that has topics like uh, science and, and, and culture and education. Education we share with UNICEF, but, but we do a lot on education. Um, our member states, this is an organization with 195 member states, and in the general conference where they all assemble, it's a really an international community consensus type of platform, and that's where they highlighted the importance of, of science education particularly and the use of technology in education. And that's where my main focus is um, for the last 20 years. So we do have a collective on international consensus on the importance of science education, importance of teacher training, importance of preparing the teachers and thinking of 21, 21st century skills. The question is how? to do that. Um, we realized that governments are, are our direct and essential stakeholder, so we have to deal with governments from a UN perspective. Uh, but we learned that we have to engage all the right partners in order for anything to work. So uh, I'm talking about partners from academia, from the corporate world, from other IGOs. Um, you know, when you talk to governments, they utilize what Conrad referred to nicely as politician mass and run against you all kinds of counter arguments to CBM. The, the same arguments you saw yesterday on the list. Um, we need to make a very strong case to policymakers uh, who are not necessarily mathematicians, uh, who do not understand this as much as people in this room understand. And as Ralph said, we must present impact studies on learning outcomes because they attack you right away. Show me that this works. Why should I invest money in this? How could I convince people in the parliament to spend all this money on a direction of, the, of that magnitude? So um, at the same time, governments ask us all the time for support and guidance. Um, so there are many pieces to this point, and I have to tell you, on the ground, in the developing world, assessment drives education in big way. I mean, all kinds of structures and business models in a country like, uh, like Egypt, where, where our office is, and the same case exists in other countries, is just all parents and students and teachers are thinking of passing a national exam at senior high to get to college. The entire business model is built around that. And when you suggest anything else, it's like destroying the temple. They're not talking about what is right and what is wrong. They're talking about what's in it for me. And it is sad, but, but true. It's, it's a real retarding factor. So a, a serious policy reform is needed also. Uh, we have to, to convince governments to think of policy reform, to change this at the root. and. Uh, 
also think of, uh, we at UNESCO are thinking of, of new concepts, like how do we measure competencies of students? Uh, we were thinking, oh, can we generate universal knowledge norms of some sort uh, in, in, in certain subjects that we can agree on and then leave it to people to, to teach any way they like as long as those, those are satisfied. You know, in, in the English language uh, competency, you think of the TOEFL score. Now, it's not easy to map that to all other subjects, but imagine if we could. If, if there is some universally accepted norm to measure competency in physics or in math or, or in chemistry. Um, we have done a lot of work in areas of teacher training, open education resources, um, and convinced governments with it, but uh, my good friend Jim Wynn here, who will speak after this panel, uh, shared a journey for eight years where we tried to, co to have international consensus on what it means to train teachers. So imagine such a simple question took us eight years to build agreement among countries on what competencies to impart to teachers, how to do that. We, we have a governance model that seemed to work that really enjoyed the power of strategic public-private partnerships. We got governments to buy into it, so it's now running across the world. We can benefit from the model, at least here. Uh, the brand of UNESCO is really the most powerful part we have. I, I think as a, that's the way I see it. It's a, it's a consensus-building instrument because it's a neutral body, so governments actually seek our advice. Uh, which is something we can use, but if we work together with the right partners. So I guess we are thinking of how to generate some consensus on some general framework involving 21, 21st century skills needed and have some consensus around it through our platforms, which opens the road for CP CBM implementation on the ground or scaling up. Uh, while we work on governments, I just want to finish by saying don't, don't forget the role of youth. Uh, it cannot be ignored, the role of the young people in all of this. Um, they are not just recipients to what we think is good for them. I think they can contribute a lot. Revolutions happened in the part of the world where I am. They call it the Arab Spring completely by the younger generation. And I think we might uh, think of something we call it the mass spring that may also depend on us and very serious contributions from the young people pushing the frontiers. Thank you.